Woe to the teachers of the law, the day of the saints is here. Woe to the Welcome to God the News Network where the saints are rising, where we are here to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. Are you a saint? How do you find out? By listening to God News Network, I want to thank you for joining us. Good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am St. Rick coming to you here on this beautiful Sunday, November 13th. And I am so excited to be here with my good friend, St. Albert from South Carolina. Good morning, brother. Good morning, Rick. <laughs> How are you doing today? It is well with my soul. How are you, more importantly? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. My health is improving. And uh, thank you for the prayers out there. Uh, the Lord is good. But, you know, even uh, when I was sick, I know that the, I knew that the Lord was good still. You know, the Lord takes, takes care of us no matter what the circumstances. And you know, the circumstances of this world are nothing but shadows. Uh, the true reality is Christ, and Christ is always with us. And we're, that's what we're learning. What we're learning is that no matter the circumstances that we're in, no matter the people that the devil sometimes uses to, uh, to steal or, uh, or joy, uh, nothing of that really matters because at the end what matters is that the Lord will never leave us, never leave us. And, uh, and not just that he won't leave us, but he wants all that's good for us. And uh, he has said it throughout the, uh, the gospel, uh, brother. He has said that everything in this creation has been created for us to enjoy, for us to see his glory and say, my dead is the best dead in the universe. <laughs> and that's what we have. We have the best dead. There's no other better dead than what we have. Uh, and, and be careful for those demons and those uh, situations in the world that think that they could get in between me and my dad because my dad won't, will not tolerate that. He will not tolerate it. Well, I can tell you this. Your dad is my dad. That's right. I guess that makes us brothers, doesn't it? That's right. <laughs> Very well said, brother. Well, here's the one most wonderful news is that we have – the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings watching out for us each and every second of every day and microsecond of every second. He is never leaving us alone. He is never away from us. He is always with us. And I think the world has been shaken up this last year dramatically by God himself because the elites and the powers, uh, the principalities of the world thought they had all this figured out. They were going to slam down the new world order on top of everybody's head. And they were going to do it with, um, by getting the European Union in order and by getting the economic system in order and the one world religion in order and the consecration in Israel uh, between three major religions uh, so on and so forth. The president of the United States was going to be taken over by who they thought was going to be taken over. Um, what a slap in the face to the principalities of this world and the leaders of this world they've had in the last 12 months, right? Mm -hmm. We've had Brexit. We've had uh, economic upheaval with the Deutsche Bank. We've had all kinds of different issues with world news events. We've had Trump winning the presidential election in the United States of America that has made all the world leaders quake in their boots. So much so as he was starting to win that night, the futures market absolutely was plummeting out of nothing more than fear. Hmm. And as we know, fear is an acronym for false evidence appearing real. And sure enough, it was false evidence appearing real to them. So the good news is God has a plan beyond all man's comprehension, but that's just the world news. The world news is limited. The world news is weak. The world news is news of the world. 
we are not news of the world. We're news of God and the kingdom that lives forever and ever. This news will impact the world news, but the world news has no impact on our news. Our news trumps the world news. It Was that a joke there? Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> had to throw it in there. So here's the thing. And, I, you know, there were so many funny little things I thought was really cool. Trump, that, that was like the Trump card of God saying, no, thank you. <laughs> we're going to do something different here. Mm. FYI, God's behind everything ultimately. But we, the people, prayed like never before in history. I think there was more people praying and seeking God and petitioning God with sincere hearts than ever before in the history of the United States, to be honest. And I think God reveals himself when his children ask. And I know another situation where there was a storm headed towards Florida, right towards some people um, down there. And they all got together and just started praying. And the storm literally stopped and changed directions. To me, that is by far proof God listens to us. He hears us. And he will help those who, in supplication to him, who cry out to him, who reach out to the Father, just as you would your own child. If, you're, if your child is reaching out saying, Daddy, help me out, he's going to help you out. <laughs> you know, he loves you. Now, sometimes our kids say, Dad, help me out. And you go, yeah, this one here you're going to have to go through on your own because that's how you're going to learn, my son. That's how you're going to be humbled. And, and, and you're so true. That's so true what you're saying, Lord, uh, uh, Rick. Uh, in fact, the Lord, you know, there's a place in the Bible where it talks the, about the Lord discipline on, l disciplining us. And a lot of uh, this religious uh, sects out there, that's what they call them, uh, which all they do is talk about the law and about their sins and all that. Uh, uh, what they want you to believe is that the Lord is coming in with a whip. And he's uh, disciplined everything every time you do something wrong and all that. And that's far from what that is saying there. What it's actually saying there, Rick, is that, uh, you know, the Lord has placed us in this world so we could learn to be rulers. And there's going to be situations that he's going to let upon us. There's going to be situations not for us to fail, but for us to know who we are and for us to trump over those situations. And that's what this world is. This world is a lecture, not as to a lecture as to how bad we are and, and, and uh, how, how bad we, 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 that we can't even, uh, you know, uh, administer our houses and all that. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a lecture as to whom we are, how good we are, and how we could come up on top of situations of this world. That's what it is because we're child to him. We're... We're born to be rulers, and, and that's what's occurring in this world. What we're, what, was, what we're seeing is situations, and in those situations, you're going to see God overtake those situations with us next to him. Yes. And we're going to see that at the end of the world. Really, that's where the, the whole, everything, all the climax is going to come in the end of the world when the people are going to say, they're going to say the same thing as what they say in the Bible. Who is man that God has so much attention to him? Hmm. God is going to say, I'll tell you who man is. Man is part of me. And that's why the whole creation is going to have to be attending to who man is, including the angels. So that's something that, you know, right now I know that the majority of the world doesn't know. They don't understand. They don't want to understand, including the churches. The churches have not revealed this to people or, 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 to, or, or to the saints. And so uh, the saints are out there kind of blind because of all the situations. Uh, well, you, you're bringing up some stuff, and as you're doing this, it's, it's not only on target, but like God is, 
giving me some information that's undertoning current behind what you're talking about. So, for example, if I, you know, in the Bible, God was asked, Christ was asked, what are the three most important things? And he says, it's faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love, right? Right. What are the three things that the enemy always uses? Um, his, his main three tricks from the beginning of time to steal, to kill, and destroy, right? Right. But, you know, they don't, people don't talk about what it is he's stealing, what it is he's killing, and what it is he's destroying. Because we know that whatever God creates, it can't be destroyed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We know whatever um, God has done, it's going to last forever. So right. what is he killing, stealing, and destroying? I'm convinced he's killing faith, hope, mm -hmm. and love. So the world news is stuff about the destruction, the killing, and the stealing of your faith, of your hope, and of love. That's and, your head right on there. And, here, and here's what's really interesting. So whenever we turn on the news, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, he's killing your faith, your hope, and your love. And it, there's three systems that the beast uses to do that. They are the systems of the political government, mm -hmm. the systems of the economic world financing system, and the religious systems. These three systems, from a world's perspective, are to destroy, kill, and steal your faith, your hope, and your love. Because what gives us more joy than our faith, our hope, and love. Nothing gives the humankind more joy than faith, hope, and love. The enemy knows that. He's not stupid. So it's time we remove the veil and look at his tricks. Yep. And the way we do that is by hearing him. Mm -hmm. We hear him. So let's, let us take a look at what the word says about this. And as I go through this, for you out there listening, I want you to keep in mind, this is how the enemy works. He wants to kill your faith, your hope, and your love. He wants to steal your faith, your hope, and your love, and he wants to destroy your faith, your hope, and love. If he can do those three things, then he is damaging your father. It's really not about you. You think it's all about you from a world perspective. But the truth is, it's about him. Even the enemy, it's about him. Mm -hmm. It's about hurting him because he knows what hurts him. And what hurts him is hurting you because he loved you so much that he gave his son to die on the cross for you. And by knowing that, the enemy says, okay, then I've got to hurt them. And I, I can do that by killing, stealing, and destroying their faith, their hope, and their love. So let's see what happened in, in Luke chapter 9. And it came to pass about, an, about eight days after these sayings, and he got done making uh, some sayings here as he was preaching. He took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, or Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. So they were speaking of his death in Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were there with him were heavy with sleep. So they've been put into sleep while this discussion was going on. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias, 
not realizing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. And when the voice was past, Jesus was found alone, and they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. Why would God go through all of this to get to hear him? What is your thoughts on that one? Well, um, Rick, the thing is, is that uh, we uh, are always thinking about religious things. If you see there what they were trying to do already, they were trying to build a building already for them and, and all kinds of glorious things and all this. Have you seen the way that Jesus Christ was talking to uh, Moses and Elijah? He was talking to them like normal men, uh, you know, uh, telling them what things are going to happen. In fact, even before Jesus Christ had entered into the world as a little boy, Jesus was with Moses and Elijah. You know, <laughs> he was already having conversations about everything that was happening. He was already he was already in the center of the earth with them. And Shoal, or the paradise side of Shoal, already having conversations with people and already enjoying the the scenery. You know. Uh, <laughs> This, this is what, what Jesus Christ is talking to them and talking to the disciples. He's trying to have a normal brother-to-brother -brother conversation with them. And, and uh, because of our religiousness, we don't see that. And we don't hear that things are occurring. You know, Jesus Christ uh, or God says a lot of times that they have ears, but they don't, they don't hear. They have eyes, but they don't see. There's many ways that God talks to us, but we don't hear it sometimes, even though he's still talking. A lot of Christians, and I, let me tell you, for a long time, I used to be part of this Christians, that I never thought that God actually talked to me. And, uh, and there's various ways that God talks to people. The, the problem is, is that we're so set up with the religiousness of this world and the circumstances of this world that we don't see what he's saying and we don't hear him because we don't recognize him a lot of times. You know, uh, I've had many ways that God has talked to me and, uh, and, and it's incredible. Uh, you know, one of the ways, and I, yes, for those out there that, and, and they're going to say, well, this guy's crazy and all that, because I've had that. I never, I, yes, God has talked to me verbally. Once in my life, he has talked to me verbally. But first, I'm going to talk and say about the things, the way he normally talks to me in everyday life. It's like a whisper in my ear. I could hear it. And a lot of times, it's a whisper of letting me know of things that, not of, out of law, but out of protectionism for me. Uh, and w what are you talking about, Albert? Well, a lot of times I get out of the house and, and he tells me, he tells me, take this with you because you're going to need it. Or don't go to this place. Don't talk to this person. Be careful with that other person. Don't do this. And it's not out of law. It's out of protectionism. Whenever I leave, and let's say a lot of times I have done it. Believe me, I don't listen to his voice all the time, just like everybody else. But a lot of times he has told me, do this, and I have left without doing that. And it cost, it had cost me. It, it cost me. I felt it, and I look back, and I say, why didn't I listen to this voice? And a lot of, a lot of times we dismiss his voice. As if it's if it's conscience voice, you know, if it's part of you know, if it's if it's you, if it's your conscience, it's not really your conscience or you. It's really him and you talking to you. And uh, of course, like the like the churches say, you know, God talks through through His Word and the Bible. But you got to remember that Christ is no longer just a written statement in the Bible. You know, that was a mistake of the Jews. You know the. The Jews, uh, the Christ told the Jews, you know, you guys search the scriptures for life. 
Just like I could say that today with the Christian world. You guys go into the Bible and search the Bible and read it all the time for life. When in reality, life is already in you. <laughs> that's the life that talks to you. And that's what, that's what we have to learn. We have to learn to understand what God, you know, Christ himself says, you know, you know there's not going to be any need for somebody to tell you who Christ is and, who, and how he talks and all that because he will be talking to you. The problem is that we don't listen. We don't recognize his voice because we're not listening. We have so many things going on in this world, the worries of this world, religion. We listen to religion all the time like if they had the golden egg, you know. I mean, religion doesn't have the whole the the golden egg. I mean, if, I mean, if you think that the government has corruption, and you think that religion doesn't have corruption, you let me tell you, you are in a world of trouble because religion is as corrupted as the government. And just like just like my brother said, you know, religion is one of the ways that the devil tries to get and takes your fun from God, your trust from God. Be careful. Be careful. Well, you made a very wise statement. We don't hear him. We don't. We listen to ourselves, our flesh, our news, our friends, our family, all those around us who, quote, unquote, mean well from the flesh. But by missing him, we miss a lot. There's so much wisdom in this verse. I want to share with you what this really, really dives into. It came to pass about eight days after these things, he took Peter, John, and James. There's a reason it's these three. And went up to a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. So there was a transfiguration. That's why they call it the Mount of Transfiguration. And his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah. What does Moses represent? The old covenant. The law. It's exactly right. What does Elijah represent? The prophets. The prophets. So here's Christ having a conversation with the law and the prophets. What's really interesting is the prophets constantly pointed towards destruction for our sins, future off blessings, things of that nature. It was always a prophetic event about things to come. The law was what was handed down to Moses from God. Now, here's what's really interesting. This is why God said, hear him. As we look back, we say it came to pass, and he, after about eight days, why eight days? There's a new, there's, God has meaning in everything. Eight is the number of new beginning. New beginnings is eight in the Bible. He took Peter, John, and James. Peter is called the rock. John is the supplanter. And James, James is kind of the law, right? So we have, here we have Elijah and Moses up there. And then all this stuff, he wants to build three tabernacles. And God says, hear him. It was a moment to let everybody know that the law and the prophets were being replaced by the rock, Christ. Our cornerstone is here. This was an amazing thing, and nobody had a clue what was going on that was there except for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, and God. Peter, John, and James, they didn't really know what was going on. But that's why he said, okay, when the cloud disappeared, he was alone. Jesus stood by himself when Peter, John, and James woke up. And he says, and it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto his master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one not knowing what he said. When Moses and Elijah 
disappeared while they thus spake. There came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as the cloud, and there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. He was alone. He was standing alone. And the reason Jesus was left is because it's now the supplication or replacement from the law and the prophets now to Christ. Hear him. Hear him. He's all that's left. Hear him. Here's what's problem is, is we don't. We instead listen to the news. And then we go to work and we get all frustrated and all upset and we get all flustered. The news is going to tell us of three systems that are going to frustrate you. They're going to steal your faith. They're going to steal your hope. They're going to steal your love. How can they do that? If you watch all these systems and you get angry, you get upset, you get hurt, you're, you're anxious, you're, you're, you're feeling like, I'm freaking out here, whatever the deal is. What you're really doing is revealing you don't understand what the enemy's doing and he's playing you like a puppet. He loves, he loves to do it. So I'm going to get you out of your faith, out of your hope, and out of your love by getting you freaked out by attacking you from three systems. I'm going to take your money and make you freak out. I'm going to take your faith, make you freak out. I'm going to take your hope and your love. And I'm going to do it through the economic system, through the political system, and through the religious systems. So <laughs> what's that? It's, it's funny that all three systems take away your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because people put their hope in their money. People put their faith in their money. People put their love in their money. If your faith, your hope, and your love are in your money, these political systems, <laughs> the religious systems, and the economic systems are going to make you crazy. They're going to drive you bananas. They're going to make you nuts. If you're not living in that world and you're hearing him, you know his schemes. You mm -hmm. don't get caught up in the schemes. You don't get caught up in the craziness of the news of the political world of the economic world and of the religious world <laughs> it's amazing rick and all three of the systems the way they do it is by guilt it's amazing all three of them is by guilt the economic system is guilt the <laughs> religious system is guilt and the government is guilt it's amazing uh the religious system they will tell you that you're not giving, that you're giving, that you're not right with God, that you're right with God, that you're almost right with God, and all, you know, and here you are, you know, in, in a roller coaster uh, ride, you know. Well, am I right? I mean, it's almost like if you have to go to the pastor almost every weekend and ask him, am I right this week with God? And he will tell you, well, it depends. How much have you given this week to the churches? Well, I've given this much. Well, yeah, you're almost there. Uh, have you asked God for, for, for forgiveness, you know, and, and you're, and you doubt what God has told you already that you are a forgiven person. Well, no, I haven't. Well, you, maybe you must, maybe you might abstain from the Lord's supper this weekend, or, or maybe, uh, maybe you ought to do this, or maybe you ought to do that. You know, the problem with you is not, you're not praying 24 hours a day and not fasting 24 hours a day. Maybe if you do that, maybe God will be inching up a little bit closer to you. And then, you go to the uh, political system, and it's the same way. Well, you know, the thing is that you're not giving enough. You know, the thing is that you're not working enough. I mean, it is, it is, it is amazing that all three systems, the law, you know, uh, the same thing. You're not, you're not accomplishing it. You're not being, you're not being Christian-like. You know, you're not being this. You're not being that. It's all, all, to take the love of God away from you. You see, it's not that God doesn't love you. It's that like what you're doing is that you're in your way of, of looking at all this because that's the way they make you do. You know, they're, they're, they're actually saying is that don't look at God's love towards you. Don't <laughs> believe of God's love towards you. That's, that's the same way that happened in the, you know, with the beginning, you know, just like we talked about uh, last week about, uh, that history tends to repeat itself in the beginning. That's what, 
you know, I bet that Adam and Eve were enjoy in that garden. They were probably enjoying everything that God has had offered offered to him. And I bet you that the devil was. We just saw that little time period there where they ate out of the tree, and the devil was right there. But I bet you that that devil was like a tick in their hair. <laughs> And telling them all the time about how God really did not love them, how God really didn't create them the way he, that he should have created them, how they were lacking. I bet you he was like a tick. And finally, that last spot of the tick, when he bites, that's when you see that Adam and Eve eat out of the fruit tree, you know. But, man, that tick was there the whole time. And, and, and that tick hasn't gone. It's here. It's with religion. It's with, with the world order. It's with the, the monetary system. It's with the, with the governments. It's with the law. That tick is still here, and it's still biting people, and people are still wondering, God, what is that that just bit me? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's unfortunately, Rick, it really is unfortunately, but let me, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. Uh, me and Rick... Do not take a dime from any of these things. You're getting all these things free because we do not. I have my own job, and Rick has his own job. And, uh, you know, uh, there's some people out there that call us uh, hyper uh, grace. Let me tell you, it's, there's no such thing as hyper grace. What there is is grace and a falsehood of who God is and what religion is. We here... And God News Network are giving you exactly grace. So be careful out there when they tell you something else, because there's either grace and there's your works. There's no other two systems. I had a pastor tell me once, once we gave him some notes and he started preaching. And true story, um, another friend of mine and I we went to him and we pointed out some things where theology, it was just not quite accurate and different things like that. And he started to study and after about 10 hours um, of time back and forth and things like that, he came to the conclusion that he believes that he believed what he was teaching wasn't accurate and that there was some things that were not quite lining up. And he said, do you have notes on this? this? We said, yeah. So we give him our notes and he said, I'll preach it for six weeks. And he said, if my church grows and, you know, and uh, God's behind it, it'll grow. If it's not, if he's not, then it won't. But I'll use your notes and preach it for six weeks. We said, deal. We trust God. <laughs> so he took the notes. He started preaching. He said, it's the fastest growth, the largest growth the church has ever seen. After the six weeks, he said, you know, he switched to something else. And I got with him and said, what are you doing? You're going back to the old junk that's not doing anything. And he says, what am I supposed to do? Just preach grace and nothing else? And I said, what else is there? What else is there? There is nothing else. There's a, you and I are having a conversation. You know, let's just call things like they are. If you're a pastor preaching stuff that isn't accurate and grace, not that we are not that we are the kind of people to um, you're in a position of leadership. Let me just say it this way. I don't want to offend the the legalists out there because I'm acting in love. If you are a position of leadership, you have an obligation to know what you're talking about. There's things that I don't know. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible that I'm going to be the first to confess, I do not know. And I stay away from that until I figure it out, until God shows it to me, to the best of my ability. If I make a mistake, I'm going to say, my bad. Sorry about that. Uh, thanks for the correction. We'll move on down the road. But that's not what I'm going to be talking about here. What I'm going to be talking about is if you're a pastor, I don't care what your name is, Mr. Swagger. <laughs> if your name is highly recognized by the world, and you're preaching something that is totally against what God says, I'm going to call you on it. Uh, Pastor Albert's going to call you on it. Pastor, you are, uh, St. Albert, you, you just saw something recently that you said uh, Mr. Swigert was saying. Can you, can you tell our audience what that is? What is it that he was saying? Well, 
He was in uh, his uh, in his regular broadcast at uh, SBN, and uh, he was talking about uh, us hyper uh, grace people that we have everything half truth and half false. Uh, it's funny that one of the things that he complains about us, first of all, is about money. And I truly agree with him that uh, people like uh, like some of the pastors that are having out there that are making million do uh, dollars, including himself, uh, years that he has raked in $150 million, and now he's worth over a, uh, uh, over a million dollars. I think that, yes, that uh, the Bible should go out, the, the, uh, the, the news of God should go out, out there free. Uh, unlike uh, him and just like every other person, it's, it's amazing that he talks about all the people about raking in money, and, his, and uh, he's raking in a lot of money. Uh, first of all, that's, that, that's the number one. Second of all, when you start looking at scriptures, you better know what you're talking about scriptures because the, Lord, the, the Lord's Prayer, what you call the Lord's Prayer, and what a lot of religion circles call the Lord's Prayer, it's not a new covenant prayer. It's a prayer that was given to the disciples because they asked before the crucifixion of Christ. And as you should know, that the crucifixion of Christ occurred on his death. That's, that's what a crucifixion is. And the new covenant began at his death. So when he was talking about that prayer, everything in that prayer has been accomplished because the Lord's prayer, or so-called the Lord's prayer, what they were actually doing is that they were asking for the cross. Everything in that prayer was asking for the cross. Second of all, when you quote Scripture, and you say that we fall at the glory of God, we, we fall from the glory of God, what you should do is continue on reading that scripture instead of taking it out of context. Because we did fall of the, glory, of the glory of God when we were under the law. But after the law, we're no longer falling out of the glory of God because the glory of God is in Christ. And what he did on the cross is not in our performances. So you better start reading scriptures correctly and understanding understand what those scriptures say now as to sin the sin if you're saying that we're not preaching it right and we're only preaching halves you're completely wrong because god himself said that he does not say, see our sins anymore why doesn't he see us in anymore because of what he did in the crucifixion now do we sin against god we can't because there's no more law for god to quote us on that we have sinned against him. Who do we sin against? It's our brothers. That's how you that's who you correct. have to confess your sins to. You James. have to confess. That's correct. That's correct, my brother. You have to confess your sins to your brother and the damage that you have to done to your brothers and try to make it right. That's who you have to ask for forgiveness to. Not to God. God has already forgiven you on the cross. Whether you're a Christian or not, He has forgiven you on the cross. The only difference between a Christian and a not Christian is that the, the Christian has a clean glass filled with the Holy Spirit. A non-Christian has a clean glass filled with nothing, with no life. And that's the only difference. So hmm. what you have to do is you're going to have to go back to your Bible instead of thinking that all the people, will, just because they're coming with stuff that you never read before in your life, that they're wrong, you have to go back to the Bible and understand what you're reading. There's a new covenant and there's an old covenant. There's a new set of rules, and there's an old set of rules. The old set of rules do not transfer to the new covenant. Now, conscience of sin, what we're talking about when we say that we have no more conscience of sin, which is not what we say, it's what the Bible says, that we shouldn't have no more conscience of sin, is because Christ and God do not hold the sins against us anymore because there's nothing to hold us since us, those sins against us because there's no more law to tell us that we're guilty of. And God himself is not telling us that we're guilty of sin. The only one that's telling us that we're guilty, guilty of sin is you with religion, which is that, what that really tells me is that what the Bible says, that if it's still in the law, you still haven't come to Christ. You haven't come to the understanding of Christ. And that's what you have to do, sir. You have to go into the understanding of who Christ is and what he did on the cross. Because you don't know what he did on the cross.
And what you're doing is just like the rest of the Bible is talking about these people who came in through laws and rules and regulations, taking the peace away from the, from, from, from the saints. So, yes, we understand that there's sin, and the sin is in the flesh. It's not in us. It's in the flesh. It's living in the flesh. We have the righteousness of God. You talk about sanctification, you don't even know what sanctification is. You better read what the Bible talks about sanctification before you start putting out whatever you learn in school, because it's not what it is. Sanctification is not even the word that you think it means. <laughs> Sanctification, according to the Bible, all it is is set apart. Now, if you're th- if you what you're thinking about sanctification is growing, yes, we're growing, but we're growing as to what we are already. We're not becoming a person; we are that person, and we're growing in the understanding of the person who God made us already. So, sir, my suggestion for you is to. Start listening to the Holy Spirit and not to the religious teachings that they have given you out there. (laughs) Well said there, St. Albert. Preach it, brother. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, you're right on target, uh, Albert. I mean, the legalistic preachers, their goal is to simply steal, kill, and destroy your faith, your hope, and your love through the religious, legalistic, religious system because that's what they did to Christ. They tried to do that. Well, they couldn't actually do that, so then they finally just decided to silence him through killing him. Mm -hmm. But everybody who had the message of grace has that same end. Because here's the thing. Fortunately, we have laws that protect people from killing people in the United States. Doesn't stop them. They still do it. They go to jail. That's the way it is. But Jesus said, you've heard it said, do not, do not commit murder. Then he said, I say, you can do it with your tongue. Hmm. So you're doing it to your people, your sheeple, your people that are there in your church. You're killing them with your tongue when you condemn them. You're killing them with your tongue when you tell them they have to sac- uh, make sure that they confess all their sin. Don't miss one. Make sure that they, if they do another sin, they better, they better get back in there and confess it or you're going to lose your salvation. <laughs> Those are the things that are bull. And that's what's not going to work for you as a leader in the long run. It says we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. That includes all those you are condemning out there and trying to get them to be condemned by telling them they're preaching half-truths. There's one Christ, he did it all, and you have nothing to do with it, no matter how bad you think you do. No matter what importance you want to place upon yourself, your flesh, your abilities, and thereof, anything to do with that, you are so incorrect, and you are going to suffer for that. Why? Because the people are awakening. The people are rising. The sons and daughters of God are rising. The saints are rising. They are figuring out the legalistic systems of the religion, the the bull systems of the economic systems, and the bull systems of the political systems. And that's the awakening across the globe that is occurring, and that's the real news that's going on, not the bull honky news you've been fed by the puppet-controlled media, a AP. They get the AP news. It's called all the puppets. All the puppets are listening and going, oh, we got to publish this. And then they're scratching their heads wondering, how did this happen? You're not listening. You're not hearing him. We are. The saints are. 85% of the evangelical Christians just voted because they heard him. They're hearing him. Weed out the real news and you will suffer. Weed out the world news and you will flourish. Hmm. That's how it works. Yeah, that's that's how, all right, Rick. That's how it's going to roll from now on, brother. You know, just real quick, uh, 
It's amazing, Jesus Christ saying, you know, that uh, you guys give all this loss and you, you guys can't even follow it. Mr. Uh, Swiger, you know, you go into loss, you can't even follow them yourself. <laughs> just leaving that up, up there. That's right. Good news is, if you're listening, you don't have to. It's been abolished at the cross. How do I know? Ephesians chapter 2, 13 through 15. Colossians chapter 2, 13 through 15. Listen, hear him. Don't hear anything else. With that, we are coming to a close, but before we do, we want to first give you a chance to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you want to accept Jesus Christ, say, I believe I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he was buried. And I believe he rose again for victory for me. And I accept that. And I believe that with all my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that, you get to participate with us in communion. Yes, we're going to do a communion. Any piece of bread, wine, juice will work. Because it's symbolism. We don't want to put rules on you that you've got to have the exact same thing. That's the law. He said, do this in remembrance of me. This is the body. This represents his body, and it was broken for you so that your body is healed. You have a new body coming. The old body is passing away. It is disappearing. And as 1 Corinthians 15, 51, in the twinkling of an eye, we will all be changed. That's coming soon just for you. And it's coming very soon. Be prepared. Get your ERP in place. Take this. And as you eat it, think of any illness you have. And it is completely healed. And this is how it's healed. Through the blood of the new covenant. This blood has cleansed you. He cleansed you through his blood on the cross, through his resurrection, and through his mercy and grace for you. You may drink and partake. Mm, hallelujah. Another beautiful, spirit-filled news. Just for you. And St. Albert, thanks for joining us. And that was a great lesson there on Mr. Swaggart and all the legalistic teachers. <laughs> and if you're a legalistic teacher and you didn't like it, that is your discipline from God himself. Now humble yourself and learn about his son and preach the love, the faith, and the hope. And arm your saints so that they cannot be fooled by the political, the economic, and the religious systems out there. Be blessed because you are blessed in the name of the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Remember, the saints are rising, and that is you. <laughs>